Hello. So I'm intellectually gifted and I have been doing some research on intellectual giftedness and uh, neurobiology, a bit of science, a bit of all that. And together with my own observations, I have come to the conclusion that there are actually two types of intellectual giftedness. So two types of brains that can have a very high IQ but that are actually almost opposite in terms of functionality, behavior, chemistry, etc. And it has everything to do with prenatal testosterone. So how does this work? During development in the womb, the fetus is exposed to prenatal testosterone. And the levels of prenatal testosterone in the womb can vary greatly. Now, according to the level of prenatal testosterone in the womb, the brain also changes significantly. And the interesting part here is that generally boys will have a higher prenatal testosterone level than girls. Generally, but not always. So actually, there are boys with a very low prenatal testosterone level, girls with a very high prenatal testosterone levels, although in general, of course, testosterone is more related to masculine fetuses. Now, a second thing that's very interesting, and there has been a lot of research the last decade or two, is that prenatal testosterone not only has an influence on the brain, a big influence on the brain, but it also has an influence on the 2D, 4D digit ratio. Now, this may seem a bit daft, but actually the difference between the length of your index finger and your ring finger gives an indication of the prenatal testosterone levels. How does this work? Your index finger is more sensitive to estrogens. Your ring finger is more sensitive to testosterone, to androgens. So actually, the 2D, 4D digit ratio, a digit is fingers, and then you have 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D. So the 2D, 4D digit ratio, which is the length of your index finger, divided by the length of your ring finger, or in other words, the comparison of your index finger with your ring finger, this 2D, 4D ratio is an indication of the testosterone levels in the womb. And to measure the 2D, 4D digit ratio, you have to measure from the tip of your finger to the crease that's closest to your palm, and you divide the length of this finger by the length of this finger and you have a figure that's more or less close to 1. It's usually between 0 0.88 for the extremely high prenatal testosterone levels and like 1.1 for the extremely low prenatal testosterone levels. By the way, I didn't mention it, it's the right hand digit ratio that seems to give the best indication of the prenatal testosterone levels and their influence on the brain. Now, I'm a man and I have actually a more feminine-like 2D, 4D ratio because my index finger is more or less the same length as my ring finger. My 2D, 4D ratio is 0 0.998, something like that. Normally, a man has a digit ratio of around 0 0.95, 96, 94, something like that. So the index finger is slightly but visibly shorter than the ring finger. Normally, women have a 2D, 4D ratio that's more or less close to 1. So, like me, 0 0.99, 98, 97, stuff like that. There are women with a very low 2D, 4D digit ratio, like men, and even lower than the normal man, and vice versa. There are men with a high digit ratio, like me, 1 or even higher. Now, the digit ratio as such doesn't interest us all that much, but it does give an indication of the prenatal testosterone levels, and prenatal testosterone levels have a very big influence on the brain. I'll explain in a bit more detail uh, just now. And it's this influence on the brain that interests us most. But of course, it's fabulous that there is a kind of very visible anatomical external sign of this pre these prenatal testosterone levels. So you can check for yourself if you have rather 
a masculine digit ratio, meaning around 0 0.95, 94, 93, 92 and lower. Or if you have a more feminine digit ratio, more like 0 0.97, 98, 1 and higher than 1. So what has science found out about prenatal testosterone and the brain? It's obviously still heavily uh, under research and obviously it's not all like 100% clear. That's typical of science and especially of recent research. But there are some general directions and the general direction is that the more masculine the brain, the more there is a tendency towards dominance, aggression, overconfidence in oneself, also more muscular strength, but that doesn't interest us all that much. And after investigating a lot of research around prenatal testosterone, I have come to the conclusion that one could more or less put it together under the general concept of rigidity. Mental rigidity, neurological rigidity. Now rigidity isn't as such positive or negative. For some things rigidity is very good. For other things rigidity is negative. It doesn't go together with flexibility, of course, and if there's a need for flexibility, then this rigidity is rather a problem. Now, the research on prenatal testosterone has focused especially on the extreme masculine brain. And by that they mean the brain that has been exposed to very high levels of prenatal testosterone. So that goes together with a very low 2D, 4D digit ratio, it would look a bit like this. Huh? And there is a theory that, for instance, Asperger's and autism is related to the extreme masculine brain. Very low digit ratio. Which goes together with rigidity, mental rigidity, which is kind of a typical trait of Asperger's and autism. The need for uh, very defined structures for repetition, for clear rules, systemization, stuff like that. On the other extreme, there hasn't been all that much uh, scientific research, and I mean the high digit ratios or the low prenatal testosterone level brains, but there has been some, and of course, uh, one can deduce more or less that uh, at the opposite of the extreme masculine brain, the extreme feminine brain will have more or less opposite characteristics. So one very interesting study, I'll put a link to a lot of studies here below, but one very interesting study found a very clear correlation between the extreme masculine brain and systemization and the extreme feminine brain and empathizing. And they also found that systemizing and empathizing are mutually exclusive. So the more you systemize, the less you empathize, the more you empathize, the less you tend to systemize. And by systemizing, they mean rule-based systems, like, for instance, mathematics, physics, mechanics, engineering, stuff like that. That's the systemizing part, which could be an explanation why there are a lot more men in systemizing professions, engineering, math, uh, stuff like that, IT, and a lot more women in the more human and social um, professions where empathizing is more important. So where the extreme masculine brain is characterized as I put it, it's my personal conclusion, by rigidity, the extreme feminine brain, low prenatal testosterone, high digit ratio, long index finger compared with the uh, ring finger, is characterized by flexibility, empathizing, improvising, changing a lot, responding rapidly to uh, changes in environment and stuff like that. Now, for those who are interested in this prenatal testosterone story, and it's really captivating, actually, I'll put a link below to a blog where there's a huge list of studies related to prenatal testosterone and the influence on the brain and the link with the 2D, 4D digit ratio, etc. I'll now go into my theory on intellectual giftedness and the two types of intellectual giftedness. So I was admitted uh, in Mensa in 2013 and I found that actually 
most people I met there, I didn't go to a lot of reunions, but most people I met there were actually, yes, intellectually gifted, but in a very different way than me. And I have seen this over and over again, that most intellectually gifted people seem to be functioning in a very different neurobiological way than myself. I have also noticed that there are quite some people that are actually very intelligent, but that wouldn't maybe very easily pass the typical IQ test. And by that I mean that actually they're not very good at systemizing and they don't have a typical convergent intelligence. And the IQ test has a tendency to reward convergent intelligence, so go as quickly as possible to one solution or only see one solution whereas there is also divergent intelligence which is also more my kind maybe a more feminine kind uh, which would be more typical of women but also of men with low prenatal testosterone levels where there is like an explosion of possibilities always it always opens up that's why it's called divergence it opens up so as i see it if you take the human population and you look at prenatal testosterone levels, you will have the like normal prenatal testosterone levels, and then you will have the very high prenatal testosterone levels and the very low prenatal testosterone levels. And in the very high prenatal testosterone levels, you will see a high capacity for systemizing, also a very good memory. It goes together with rigidity. Once data is in there, it's, it stays there, but it gives a difficulty to adapt, etc. And these people will very easily be detected as intellectually gifted also. And then you have the other side, which is the extreme feminine brain, low prenatal testosterone, which are also usually very intelligent, but I think they're not usually detected as being intellectually gifted, also for a variety of other reasons not only because IQ tests are kind of geared towards the extreme masculine brain, but also because these people, the extremely feminine brains, the low testosterone people, they tend to be very non-dominant, they tend to have very low confidence in themselves, they tend to not to want to uh, come to the front, like they're, they're more um, discreet, more empathizing, etc. And they will probably, whereas this kind, the high test prenatal testosterone people tend to be overconfident, so they will easily think I am intellectually gifted and they will easily go and do a test, etc. These people will probably think, eh, the extremely low testosterone brains, will probably think, no way, I am nobody, I am nothing, I am especially not intellectually gifted. Also because the masculine, extremely masculine brains tend to consider that their kind of intelligence is the only kind of intelligence. Whereas these people, the extremely feminine brains, tend to be a lot more open. I myself, for instance, would have never thought I was intellectually gifted. I did the IQ test because I felt really different from a lot of other people and in some moment I started doing some, some IQ tests on the internet and I started to investigate a bit and after like a few hours I started to get the point of the IQ test and as I explained in another video I had to actually simplify things because I have a divergent intelligence I had to try to converge and once I understood that actually what they wanted from me was convergence and not divergence instead of thinking this and this and this may be the possible solution and a lot of others, I had to think, okay, what would be the one single solution in case there would be a universe where there exist single solutions? For me, that universe doesn't exist. But if I would have to think like that, what would be the solution? And then I was became really good at the IQ tests. And I passed my IQ test uh, for intellectual giftedness also, which led me to think, okay, there's something where my kind of intelligence is put a bit at disadvantage in the general IQ test. Now, I have had 
an education of engineering and maths. So that helped also to get what the IQ test wanted from me. But I am convinced that there are a lot of people, women also, and men with feminine brains with a high 2D, 4D digit ratio, that are actually very, very intelligent, but not detected as such. So here's in very short my uh, ideas on the two types of intellectual giftedness related to prenatal testosterone levels. Tell me what you think about it. What are your experience with it? Where do you uh, find yourself in this prenatal testosterone level story? How is your digit ratio? Is it high, feminine or low, masculine? And what do you think of all this? Again, a huge thank you to all those very kind people who put likes and who subscribe and who share and stuff like that. And see you in the next video.